Hi, I'm Annie from Bloom. Thank you so much for joining me. This is the first video of a series of videos that I'm going to make to teach you everything I know about block printing. Um, I will show you everything from the materials that you need to how to create your own custom color palette to how to organize your designs on fabric and ideas for what to make with the fabric that you have created. So let's get started. My background is in textiles and fashion design and during COVID I discovered block printing and I have never looked back because it is so much fun and it has been such a relaxing um, activity to do and you can do it with kids, you can do it with friends and it just makes such wonderful uh, gifts for people and I just I can't get enough of it so I really wanted to share it with others so you can try it out for yourself. The first thing that you're going to need is a surface to block print on. Um, I am using a folding table with a couple of towels. Now you really want a padded surface for when you print on fabric. And that's because you really need that sort of that give in order to get the pigment to adhere to the fabric and sort of penetrate into the fibers. So a padded surface really gives a better image. And I'll show you here what I have. Here's my pad, it's been well loved. But it's really just a couple of layers of towels, just old towels on top of a plastic folding table. Um, and this is the surface that I use to print on. The three towels has provided um, a good amount of cushioning. I had two before, but I still think the surface was a little too firm. So when I added a third towel, I liked the, the look of the prints a little bit better. So go ahead and experiment. Um, but for me, three towels works best. Now, once you have your surface, you need something to carve and you're gonna wanna get some linoleum. I love this pink Speedy Carve Linoleum by Speedball. I've tried a couple other linoleums. I've used their white and their blue, um, and I actually have some stamps made with the white and the blue. The white I don't really much care for because it's very, very soft. I would say the texture is similar to that of firm tofu, um, and it just breaks really easily. It doesn't create a very durable stamp, but it is nice for kids because it does carve so so quickly and so uh, so well. You don't have to push very hard at all, but you can even see this one has like a piece missing. So it doesn't hold up very well. The blue is a little better, but I find that the blue has kind of a gritty texture. I'm not sure if they put like a sawdust or something in the linoleum, but I find when I carve it, it kind of chunks out a little bit and doesn't give me quite the smoothness that um, the pink does. So the pink, in my opinion, is the best. I get this at my local art store, but you can also get it on Amazon. I will also put a link below for all the places that I get my supplies from and the names of the supplies and everything so you have access to that. Um, this one costs, this is a six by 12 inch piece and at my local art shop, this was about $19. But you can get it in other sizes also. So after you have your linoleum, you need something to carve your linoleum with. And the best place to start that I have found is with this Speedball Linoleum Cutter. Um, it's a very affordable tool. Um, kids can use it. My six-year-old uses it. I think I have all the tips here. Sometimes they get lost. Um, but it comes with about, I think, six tips. And then you just put the tip that you need inside of the this little area here. And you can just change the tips out as you go, depending on what, what you need. Um, I have found that this lasts a pretty decent amount of time. I have a couple of them lying around the house, um, but I really like this tool. Um, it's great for beginners and you can get this on Amazon or I got this at my local um, art store. Um, my sweet husband for Christmas bought me this amazing cutter set. Um, he got this, I think, at a, a wood supply, a woodworking company. Um, this is by far my favorite. It took a little bit of time getting used to because they're very sharp and it kind of, you have to hold it in a different way in your hand. So, um, there was an adjustment period, but now that I'm used to it, this is by far my favorite. Um, they're very sharp. I've cut myself many times 
<laughs> but um, if you are looking for something a little bit more professional as opposed to this, then I would highly recommend this. But if you're just starting out, the Speedball linoleum cutter is probably the best. Um, all right, so you've got your linoleum. You cut it out into a stamp. Your stamp might look something like this. This is just one that I did a while ago. Um, you need to get some color on here. So the colors that I like to use um, are by Speedball, um, but I like to use water-based screen printing inks. They do make uh, block printing inks that are oil-based. I don't really like the feel of the oil-based inks on fabric. I find it's very stiff. Um, also, cleanup is a little bit more complicated because it's oil-based. Um, it takes a longer time to dry. It's, it's not something I like to use. So I really like water-based screen printing inks and I use Speedball. And this works well for natural fabrics, natural fibers. So cotton and linen, you can also use it on synthetics. Um, you can even use this on paper. Um, I've just had a lot of success with this. So once again, you can get these off of Amazon. Um, if you're just starting out, pick one or two colors, but if you really want to start making your own custom color palette, which I will tell you how to do in another video, you really need seven colors. And with these seven colors, you will be able to make any color you want. So the seven colors are green, red, yellow, white, black, process magenta, and blue. From these seven colors, there is no color you can't make. And I will show you an example of just a few of the colors that I've made. So here is sort of a look at my custom colors. And I have recipes for these colors on the back. Um, and in another video, I will show you exactly how to do this. So one of the things that I like to mix my colors with and to use to get the colors out of the jar is this really nice uh, palette, this color palette set. And I just get this set off of Amazon. It came with five. And the one tool that you really want to make sure you have in your set is this spatula type tool that has a flat top. This is going to make your life so much easier when you are mixing the colors and you're pushing it around. And I'll show you how to, I'll show you all that in another video um, when we, when we make some colors. But this one is for me is really my favorite. It's kind of the only one that's essential. Um, these other small ones are great for, you know, putting little bits of color, but you can use plastic spoons and things like that. But this is the, the tool you want to have. All right. So you've got your colors, you've got your stamp. Now you need to get that color onto the stamp. And there's a couple ways to do that. The first way, which is my favorite way, is to use a brayer. And there are lots of different brayers on the market. A lot of, um, a lot of the ones that you'll see are hard rubber brayers. I do not like that for block printing on fabric. I like that for paper. Um, but for fabric, it doesn't pick up enough ink. Um, so these foam ones work really, really well. Um, I've seen some sponge rollers on Amazon that has like a plastic handle. I've never used those personally, but I haven't heard the best things about them. I think they just pick up too much ink and they don't distribute the color evenly. So this sprayer is by far my favorite <clears throat> and it is made by Rollerite. Rollerite, excuse me. And I just get this off of Amazon. Um, I love that it's made in the USA, so that's pretty cool. Um, and it just works really, really well for block printing on fabric. The one downside of it that I will say is it's noisy. <laughs> so I was block printing one evening and my studio wall shares a wall with my son's bedroom. And it was in the evening, he had gone to sleep and I was doing this and I just heard, mama, I can't sleep with that squeaky sound. So, um, it is loud and so I need to find a way to, to quiet this down. But other than that, this is a great brayer. Um, the other option that you can use are these foam sponge brush type things. Um, 
this is not my first choice. You can get them in packs like this. Um, I got a huge pack off of Amazon. I'll link it below. Um, I don't like it for a few reasons. The first reason is I find it absorbs a lot of pigment, um, a lot of paint, and it kind of gets the paint into areas that I don't want it. So as you can see, there's sort of like around the edges of the stamp. When I use this sponge, it kind of gets into there. So when I stamp it, I get a lot of noise. And what I mean by noise is this. See how there's some paint around the stamp that I don't really want. Some people love that look. I don't really like it for my block prints. So I try to avoid that. And this tends to make that happen more frequently. I do like it for smaller stamps, like something like this. It's just perfect because the brayer, it's like, well, I don't need hardly any paint, you know? So I do like it for smaller prints, excuse me, for, for smaller stamps. Um, so what you're going to need if you're going to use the foam brayer is you're going to need something to roll it on. And that's when this awesome piece of plexiglass comes into play. I just got this um, at Home Depot. It's just a couple of bucks. It works great. I put my color right on here and I use my foam roller to get the color onto the, onto the sponge. And I go from there. I also like to mix some of my colors on there. Um, and we will go over that um, in another video. Um, all right. So you've got your stamp, you've got your color, you've got your color on your stamp. Now you need to put it on some fabric. So the fabric that I love to use is linen. That's my favorite. Um, and I just, I like to use white linen and natural linen. And I get this natural linen um, and the white linen off of Etsy. You can also get it at your local fabric store, um, but Etsy is a great place to find linen. And what you wanna do with your fabric, you wanna wash it first. Always wash your fabrics first. Don't use fabric softener. You wanna get all that formaldehyde and any kind of um, anything else that they may have put on the fabric. Um, wash it in a warm setting with a natural detergent, throw it in the dryer, and make sure you iron your fabric after. You want a nice smooth surface. So once you have that, then you're ready to start printing. Um, and I'll just show you some examples of some prints that I did. So this was the first stamp that I carved. Um, it's my petunia print, and this is the flower that goes with it because I wanted two different colors. I wanted the stem to be one color and the flower to be another. So two different blocks for two different colors. And this is what the petunia print looks like on the natural linen. And this is what it looks like on the white linen in a different colorway. And if, I don't know if you can see, but when you block print, the color, it's not completely filled in. And we'll go over that in another video. Because um, remember, every time you press the stamp down, it's going to look different, which is one of the things I love about block printing. So you've got your fabric printed. You're like, now what? Let it dry a day or two. Let it finish completely drying out. Then you want to heat set it. That is the thing with the speedball um, screen printing ink is it has to be heat set. And the way that you do that is with an iron. So I just have my cheapy iron right here. And I put it on the highest setting that my linen fabric will allow, which is, I think it's a six for this one. Um, and you iron it on the wrong side of the fabric no steam, so dry iron. I've also ironed it on the right side of the fabric. I haven't noticed any difference, but I've been hearing from other people that wrong side of the fabric. And then you are ready to create something. And I've made some pillows, I'm working on some handbags, um, but this is just a really fun way to create something lovely. You can make just about anything that you want out of this. So before we go, I will show you just some samples of some things that I've made. Here you can see I've just got some prints. I like to make samples of all of my work so I can kind of mix and match prints. Um, I don't know if you can see on top of the chair here, I've got a pillow that I've made, some pillows, um, but it's just been really fun. Um, and you know, it's just, it's a way to just be creative. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll go ahead and put a list of everything that you need down below and stay tuned for the next one. Thanks so much for watching.